Right then, let, let's start where it all started. You really was at Northampton where you played 200 games and you, of course, caught the eye of uh, Mr. Paisley and he signed you for £66,000. Yeah, and I went straight into Roy's reserve team. Um, I was waiting for that, really, um, and duly kind of at, at Northampton because I'd been there um, for about six years, seven years, and uh, the break, I thought, would never come. And then... Uh, Jif Twentyman has a look at me as a fullback. They're waiting for a fullback, and they sign me uh, as Bob Paisley's first signing. So, for me, it opened my world. Okay, I still had to go through a great deal. I had to play six games under Roy Evans. <laughs> oh, they were pretty good, by the way. Um, so, you know, it was difficult. You know, kind of. You know, having played in the lower leagues for six, seven years, and, uh, you know, to get that chance, Liverpool gave me a chance, and Roy gave me the chance and everything I was playing in with him in the reserve team for about six games, and uh, they were brilliant at organising because, you know, I finally came, and your name goes up on the board, and it's either in Roy's reserve team or the first team, and they're going away. And they're going to a Warrington hotel this weekend, and I hadn't brought my family up by then. I was in digs by our Melwood training ground. So Friday night, I go to sleep knowing I'm playing in the reserves under Roy Evans at Anfield against Everton Reserves. That'll do me. I'll, I'll get a little test, but the biggest game is going to be at Goodison. So they were clever at keeping stumped because Saturday morning, Tom Saunders, his friend and Bob Paisley's friend, knocks on my digs door. He said, uh, get your best suit on. There's, one of, there's a problem with one of the fullbacks. He said, uh, the boss needs you to pick your boots up and then I'll take you over to Goodison. I said, okay, fine. So we went up to Anfield where my boots were laid out for Roy's reserve game and uh, picked my boots up and I thought, He's rolled them up in a brown paper bag. I said, are we taking the car, Tom? He said, no, son, we're walking. I thought, there's no way I'm playing at Goodison if he's asking me to walk there. Anyway, irrespective of that, I got on with it, picked my boots up, I'm like this, through Stanley Park. I'm getting asked every six yards, any spare tickets, mister? I didn't know what a ticket looked like. <laughs> I thought, ah, to hell with it. I just go in there. I walked in the dressing room, and Paisley's there. He's waiting for me to open the, the dressing room door. And he goes, get ready to play some left back. That's when I discovered adrenaline was brown. But I thought, get it. <laughs> I said, you're 23 years of age. This is what you were dreaming. I've been six, seven weeks with Roy, right? This is what you were dreaming of with, you know, you sign in here, and I'm, they're playing me at left back. <laughs> anyway, Paisley, I go to <clears throat> Ian Callahan, who I sit next to every day of my changing life, right? And I go to Callie, I said, Callie, what advice have you got for me, mate? You know, because he's played more games in the red shirt than anyone. So he's next to me every day. I said, Callie, what advice have you got for me? He said, Phil, and this is what Ian Callahan's like. He said, Phil, even if I'm tightly marked, give me the ball. I'll help you out, mate. I'll hit Cali Europe. Fucking star. <laughs> you know what I mean? It calmed me down. I thought, yeah, I can cope with this. And then 10 minutes before we're going out at Goodison, I go and ask another scouser, a different person, Tommy Smith. Sadly, Tommy's passed away. But I will say, Tommy... I asked him the same question as I put to Ian Callahan. And I said, Tommy, what advice? You've played in hundreds of these derby games. What advice have you got for me? I want to get through it. I don't want to let the lads down. He said, Phil, you're only marking a little fella called John Carley. I said, well, what do I do in the first five minutes, Tommy? He said, make sure you kick him. <laughs> as deadpan as that. You know what I mean? Anyway, I kicked him and slided, slid him out early doors. I went, Smitty, was that all right? He said, nearly that was brilliant. 
I said, what do I do in the next five minutes? He said, kick him in harder. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was that type of person. <laughs> yeah. But I got through it, nil-nil. That wasn't bad, was it? Yeah, it was first bad. game. Nil-nil, eh? first game. And so I went back with Roy in the reserves. Oh, oh well, it Roy. He didn't want me back. He didn't want me back. He told the boss he didn't want me back. So, yeah. yeah, you can't so, get the reserves, though. You're not good How clever they were. You know, imagine telling me I'm playing Friday night while I'll be on the phone to Mom saying, hey, Mom, get on. And Terry Mack made his debut the same day as me, and he'd come from Newcastle a week or so later. So there we were. But I got a good baptism, didn't I? Course, you know, yeah. for them to trust me to get through 90 minutes with our arch city rivals, that'll do me. And so once you established yourself, established yourself in the side, you went on that unbelievable run of 417 games without missing one. How the hell did you do that? Yeah, uh, Roy still a record, would, by the way. Yeah, Roy would say it would be. They were clever. Uh, uh, encourage you because I had a broken toe on one foot, and um, it came kind of. How am I going to solve this problem? So what they did, they actually kind of solidified uh, the broken toe with a bandage around it, and I had to wear a seven on one foot and the broken toe foot and nine for six weeks. Imagine that. I've got a fucking great boot on one side <laughs> and a little one on the other just to overcome this broken toe. They've devised, they were brilliant, honestly. I, I've got to congratulate Roy and all the gang in the boot room. They were so clever, you know, to keep it storm about me playing at Goodison. You know what I mean? They could do an in-house thing. What's the best way of doing this? Tom, you go and pick him up from his digs. Tell him nothing. <laughs> you understand Everybody, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a brilliant way they went about their business. And I've got to congratulate them because, you know, kind of to do what I did in the long term and uh, to be available um, throughout those 417 league games. Roy knows that we had some brilliant surgeons, and uh, <laughs> Roy. Knows, Roy was it? <laughs> well, it wasn't him, that, but 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 I smashed my cheekbone right in a game against Derby. <coughs> Roger Davis, a big centre forward for Derby County, smashed my cheekbone, broke it, and we're playing West Ham the following week. We haven't got anything in midweek, so I've gone in, had it operated on, kind of operated, and gone to Melwood. And I'm watching the lads train. Tuesday, Wednesday, fine. Bob Paisley said, how do you feel, son? I said, I feel pretty good. I've had a kick about on my own. He said, well, tomorrow we'll engage you. I'll tell the lads to stay away because you've had this rebuilt. He said, um, OK. Anyway, we went in the following day, Thursday. And we're going to, to West Ham. Right to play on Friday, well, not Friday, but Saturday, and we go in Friday. So we, he wants to know whether I'm fit enough on Friday to go. That's what he's getting at. He said, how do you feel, son? So by Thursday, I'm feeling pretty good. The boys have stayed away. They've been so don't go and elbow nearly again. You know what I mean? So they've been told to stay away. Fine. I go in. I said, boss, I feel great, mate. Smashing, you know? You allowed me to have the ball today in training. I just feel free, you know, kind of, it's good, I feel good. He said, you might as well come down to London with us. I thought, okay, yeah. So I go with my roommate, Ray Clements, right? I look after him like I always did, you know, ordered his breakfast, because goalkeepers aren't real footballers, by the way. <laughs> sorry, Bruce. Oh, are you gone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you imagine, right? So I'm thinking, oh, oh. so anyway, we go and uh, I play the game. We win 3 1. I get through it perfectly well, you know, kind of. And one thing he said to me, he said, You're only playing against an England colleague called Alan Devonshire. He said, The one you've got to be aware of is Billy Bond. 
he's the brush, he's the busy body, and he'll punch you in the face, and he'll do this, and he'll do that. We won 3-1. Keegan got two goals. And I got away with playing with a double fracture of the cheekbone. That's how daft we were. <laughs> to hang on to the red shirt in the first team, I was. You know, after yeah. my years at, in the lower leagues. You don't blame me, do you? No, of course not. I mean, we couldn't see it happening today. Like, <laughs> no, they wouldn't be allowed it today. No, no. No, no. It's, no. Not, it's, it's normally a broken eyebrow, isn't it, now nowadays? <laughs> but... Uh, Obviously, you've won those numerous amounts of medals, as I mentioned before, still as the most successful Englishman to play the game. Can we start off with that 76-77 final and that first European Cup, of course, in which you scored the pen to make it 3-1. How was that to get that first European Cup for Liverpool? It was massively important, of course it was. Yeah. And uh, we went through and uh, to actually beat St Etienne uh, and, and kick on from there. Zurich in the semi and go, uh, it was really kind of hard. Uh, and to actually kind of Keegan's last, to send him away with the best present ever. You know, because the year before, I hate to say it, I was in the dressing room, we won the UEFA Cup, right? The Europa Cup. So all I'm saying is that that got left everywhere. It did, because it's got no handles, no nothing. <laughs> it's just there with a big onyx it got left, ladies and gentlemen, everywhere we went to present it. But this one, Keegan was going away. And we always knew he was going. He's going to Hamburg the following year to give Keegan and us the best present ever. And the city of Liverpool was the one we wanted above the Euro Europa Cup because we'd won it the year before. And we wanted dearly. That's the one with the lovely and, and handles that everybody loves to pick and hold at the old big ears. Old big ears handles, you're right, spot on. So no, it was a lovely thing and uh, I've got to say, yeah, Roy was there and we were all there and everybody was passionate to want to win this. And, and I know by a famous scouser, Ian Callahan, because I got home to a wonderful kind of round the city troll with this lovely new kind of elegant kind of cup. But I looked at the newspapers on the way before we went round the city and I saw Ian Callahan. When I'm about to take this penalty, Ian, Ca Ian Callahan, right, who's played in the red shirt more than anyone, he's at the back of me. While I'm striking the ball past Wolfgang Neeb, thank you, bump, 3-1, we've won this. Callie's at the back of me, like this. <laughs> I know he's a good Catholic, <laughs> but I gave him some stick, didn't I? <laughs> He was praying dearly, he knew. Because <laughs> Roy will tell you, they really put us under pressure. My old roommate, Ray Clements, made two great saves in the last little bit to keep them out and 2-1. Two, 2-1's one. Two, fine, but 3-1's better. <laughs> and to step up then and knock it in, it was lovely, you know, to feel relieved that everybody's going to be partying tonight, and they were. We never had too much sleep. Uh, no wonder Terry McDermott pissed over the balcony at, uh, <laughs> at the town hall, you know what I mean? Um, there he was, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he showed everybody <laughs> what he was worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, believe, I do believe at the actual after party, while you were still in there, was it about 4,000 people turned up apparently? Oh, that, that might be exaggerated, but a hell of a lot of people. Yeah, they did. Friends of friends. <laughs> And Tomo had quite a few, yeah, anyway. But no, it was lovely, you know, yeah. it kept bolstering. We never went to sleep that night, you know, we sat around the pool, you know, it was just luxury, you know, kind of in a, and this huge, you know, that, that <laughs> European cop that was really significant yeah. in everybody's discretion, you know, kind of fine. Um, but, as I said, you know, kind of, it took a lot of, time you know to win our first championship you know i was there second year and bob had gone second in his first year and roy knows 
at Wolves we had to go. And it's ironic, our, our last fixture this year, where is it? Wolves at home. Is that a bit of an onus? I hope yeah. so. For all of us. But we went to Raw Wolves in his second year, Bob, and we knew it was an important game for them as well because they had to win to stay in the division and we had to win to go above QPR. Wouldn't happen now because you all play on the same day. Of course, that's one, yeah. But, you know, kind of what made me laugh, Bob Paisley in the, in the room before the game. Wonderful, because Phil Thompson, you know, our Sky Pundit friend, and uh, he said to him, he said, uh, boss, I've just had, a, I just had a, a word with my two brothers and a few of their mates from Kirby. He said, just out of the little window. He said, they haven't got tickets, gaffer. Any chance of opening the big double door where they are in the street? And then they can come through the dressing room and down those stairs and in the paddock for nothing. And you can see Paisley going, oh, no. Oh, I finished second last year. I've got to get this shankly thing off my back. After about a couple of minutes, he goes, OK, Tomo, I'll do that for you, mate. He opens this big double doors, and bearing in mind, Roy and his staff were wherever busy, oiling legs and everything, you know, in those days. He's opened the door. Or well, not only is Ian and Owen Thompson come in, but Arthur Kirby. <laughs> with flags and everything. <laughs> come on, Evelyn, get them going! Come on! <laughs> we can't stop laughing. I right? bet. I'm, <laughs> I can't stop laughing, right? And Roy knows, in the end, after about five minutes, there's about 300 people got in, not only Ian and Owen Thompson, but half of Kirby, where they live, right? They've got in through our dressing room, down into the paddock. Oh, well. He finally helps shut the door, and he says, he's pushing the door to, and he goes, Tomo, how many brothers have you got? <laughs> <laughs> what a line that was! <laughs> oh, I'll never forget it. Hey, we were one down, Roy, weren't we, for a lot of the time, and we, we, we won the game there. And I hope Mr. Jurgen Klopp um, overcomes Wolves the, for the very similar account. That would be very nice. It would be very nice indeed, right? Obviously, that through the 80s was success after success for yourself. Then we come to that one in Rome, 84. Now, before you got into the ground, and obviously what went on in the ground and, the, and in the tunnel, is it right you were getting stoned and you had to have run for your lives from the bus? Yeah, we did. Um, and basically, um, I mean, Bruce been through his, his view of Rome and what he achieved. What he didn't tell you, there was a certain thing that the players organised, and, and it was brilliant. On, on our, I, I've got to say, and it was brought to the attention of the captain... Right, which was Graham Soonis. And um, was that? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. So Graham Soonis was captain there. So he's up the front and Bruce is with him. Right? And what we've agreed, Craig Johnson, right? In 1984, Joe Fagan's manager, right? And we feel, oh, well done. He's a nice fella. And he's a tribute to Liverpool Football Club. He really is. And we know inside stories that he's helped. Anyway, this time he's manager. And you think, ah. Oh. He said, I tell you what we'll do, lads. We've won two trophies. We've got the league. We've got the League Cup. We've played 67 games. Our only game left is in Rome. 68 games. He said, I tell you what we'll do. We'll go and have a bit of a jolly, like you're having round your tables. We're going to Tel Aviv. We're going to play a game to make it official. Roy was there, right? So we go and lose in Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, 3-1. So, during that 3-1 defeat, Craig Johnson, you remember him? Of course you do. The one with the, the Aussie boy with the black curly hair, yeah? We all had perms, so did you, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. We all had perms in our days, didn't we, pup? So, yeah, so there we are. Craig Johnson says, why don't we sing a Chris Rea song? He's from Middlesbrough, so he knows the group. So the boys learn the words for the Chris Rea song. 
And Brucey, who's been here, on here tonight, he was at the front with our captain, Graham Soonis. So, Brucey, you've got to give us the thumbs up when the ref says, wait here. Because in the Olympic Stadium, it's a long kind of draw up the steps before the world sees you on the grass. So that's when we're going to wrap out this Chris Rear song. Well, it was beautiful. Because Bruce is where that fella is now with a camera. And then Brucey goes, boom. So we all get our pretend guitars out. We're not as good as the Beatles, but we're going to have a good go. I don't know what it is, but I like it. Boom, boom. I don't know what it is, but I want you to stay. Boom, boom. Hey, round of applause. <laughs> you want to see the Italians looking at us? <laughs> Cheeky scouse bastards. <laughs> they haven't even kicked a fucking ball yet. <laughs> and they're fucking singing songs. <laughs> but it worked, didn't it? Yeah. Why? Because who scored the opening goal? None of you know. <laughs> Thank you, I'm going. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just such a pleasure, right, to give Joe Fagan three trophies in his first year, and Roy would agree with that. It was so lovely the way the boys decided we're going to sing this Chris Rears song. Maybe Mr. Klopp should do that with his yeah, song this year. Rock and roll song, yeah. I think, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, you can you can convey the message that yeah. me and Roy have sent to him. That's yeah. it. Yeah, we want we want a, a song in the tunnel, rock and roll. Yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, moving on from that, um, unfortunately, to the next year, where it didn't end so well in '85 when your captain was in that unfortunate disaster of of Heisel, and it forced Joe to quit. You were captain at the time. I mean, how how was it for you? Just to talk about it a little, a little bit. Well, it was uh, as bad as the, the sad news about Tommy Smith today that Roy has given us. Um, it was really heart-wrenching uh, for me. Um, I knew what had happened, so did we all in the dressing room. And it was like endearing to make us play after I don't know how many hours this, you know, kind of put the kick off back, but it was extremely four or five hours, whatever it was, it was because people have lost their lives, then that wasn't good enough. And we were forced to actually kind of take the team out, and I threatened not to. <laughs> and basically, they said, what happens if you don't take the team out, and they threatened me with this, that if I don't take the team out, then there's other people might be found in a similar way, then you are going to be responsible for it. So they, they didn't make it easy for me uh, as captain of Liverpool. And we all suffered. We all did immensely, really, because we knew what was going on in the dressing room. Roy was there. I was there. And it wasn't daft. You know, we knew exactly how many people had passed away at a football match that was just not our thing. And no, I just absolutely kind of felt for everybody who lost their life. It wasn't good enough. And basically, we were asked to play a European final in a dilapidated stadium that was due for demolition. That's not good enough for anybody. And it wasn't good enough for Liverpool and the record that we we certainly maintained and we wanted to again um, but it was never going to be and unfortunately that cost, well, that cost Joe his job but it affected Joe to the to the mount where he, he retired um, Kenny got the job but I believe that you really wanted that job at that time I'd have loved it I'd have loved helping Kenny you know kind mm. of anything but you know the opportunity didn't come along so I found out through Ian Callaghan um, leaving, you know, after all those lovely years wearing the famous red shirt of Liverpool, 
he left, I think, Roy in 81 with John Toshak to Swansea, something like that. And, and Kelly and Tommy Smith had gone and Ray Kennedy had gone and there were several in the dressing room and I'm thinking, wow, is half the dressing room disappearing to Swansea for this season? And I wondered whether we could cope with building another team. Uh, and we did do that and we carried on. Uh, and that's the nicest thing. Uh, but that was the decisive time for me to know that like everybody else, you're going to have to make this move sooner or later. Even Ian Callahan, he was going to go Swansea with John Toshak. So you're going to have to go, and that is the beautiful thing. Time, they give me time at Liverpool to settle in. And I've got to say, I showed the ability to show Stevie Nichol he wasn't getting my shirt for another five years. He can have it after I leave, but I haven't finished here. Not while I'm you, here. <laughs> not while I'm here. You can play in somebody else's feet. And Brucey gave him, what, what did he call his, his feet? What did he call? Oh, shuffle foot. Shuffle foot. He was, yeah, he was at the hugest kind of feet. No goes. He's th anyway, forget <laughs> that. Yeah. Big socks. Yeah, yeah. big socks. Yeah, big socks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. It was lovely. You know, I, I resisted, and the club benefited. Mm. All I'm saying is that Stevie came in 1981. I didn't leave till almost 1986. And we piled up the, the trophies with him in the team somewhere else other than the number two on his back. Now, obviously, us Liverpool fans really took you to half for Mr. Consistency. Um, and also, we give the nickname Zico, of course, for your scoring abilities. Yeah, I mean, the cop entrust you in the end you become a senior player and I thought Stevie Nicol oh he's in for my jersey you know what I mean I'm thinking oh am I am I gonna disappear in 18 months or, or a year you know you don't know so I started to pull the trigger of shooting anywhere around the edge of the box and I got goals I, th I, th I think I scored about 13 goals one season and there was only about six penalties in that lot you know what I mean? So I, I went and showed them, and that's all you had to do, is show them your dedication is, yeah, you can tie your right-hand side up. Yeah, you've scored five goals during general play, as well as, say, six penalties that you've had to take. So it was a lovely kind of challenge for me, especially after losing Ian Callahan right next to me. You know, I really did regard him as Mr... Mr. Liverpool, and the Lord Mayor, I used to call him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I've asked you the lads. Um, best player you played with? I think Kenny. Um, I think Kenny was um, the one. Him and Graham Souness, for me, uh, was wonderful, really. His first year, the impact he made, like I said, Keegan, you know, kind of him disappearing to Hamburg. And, and Kenny coming in, and Sui after that, they were two of the most magnificent kind of people. Uh, and they gave you a, a punch, or oh, a really kind of punch with their attitude, you know what I mean? And literally probably sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah, because the England-Scotland, I mean, the England-Scotland thing. Scottish they, Mafia was the... Uh, ah, it was lovely, you know, kind of the togetherness. Because I was actually kind of watching one England-Scotland up at Hampden, maybe. And my roommate, Ray Clements, was in goal for England, not Peter Shilton, on this particular day. And Kenny's gone up the byline, and he thinks, ah, oh, he's going to cut it back. But Kenny doesn't do that. Ray moves out past the near post, thinking it's going down the six-yard box. And Kenny knocks one in, and it goes in. Well, I'm watching it in, a, in an English... I'm, I'm going on holiday with a family the following week. And we're going home. Me and Ray Clements have got a driver, right? We're going home from Hamden, having lost 1-0 to a goal Kenny scored. <laughs> so we know we're going to get it. Uh, you know, when you get the, back. When, yeah. the, when the season starts again, we know we're going to get it. So I said to Ray Clements, I said, Come on, Ray, let's have a few beers. We've got a driver, he can pull over to any pub. He said, no, we're going home. I went, you miserable. 
At least we can stop for a drink here. And he said, no, come on, we're going. Driver, get in the car, let's go. We got to Gretna. It took us three days to get back to Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ray Clement stopped at every pub. Because <laughs> he'd knocked this one past him. And he knows he's going <laughs> to get it. Human. <laughs> he knows he's going to get it from Kenny. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he, he really did. Oh, he soaked a, a, a lot, you know what I mean? And, and I think it, it, it kicked Liverpool in, you know, the, the, having so many Scots as well as English too. It was so lovely, the balance they had and Roy had in reserves too. I have to flip it. Where's player you played with? Robinson. Who? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who? Michael Robinson. Yeah, Robinson, yeah. Um, not quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> You're being nice to this, are you? <laughs> I, 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 I'll go a long way, but yeah. I'm just saying that I don't quite think he came up to the people that I'd watched before him. And so he didn't stay long, Roy, did he? Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but yeah. you understand Michael Robinson, yes, you're right. So I think <laughs> he's getting it tonight, Ricky Turner. Yeah, yeah, he's a Mickey Thrupney bit for me. Anyway, yeah. So, so yeah, he was another one, really. I mean, I didn't play. No, I didn't play. I didn't play with Mickey. Good job, I didn't. Yeah. Good job now. <laughs> yeah, because I'd take a bollocking from Tommy Smith any time, right? But I couldn't take it one from Nicky Tanner. No, I could not. <laughs> uh, obviously, you mentioned that your love for England there, which once you'd obviously finished playing career, you ended up on Graham Taylor's coaching staff and working with the likes of Gaza, Lineker. How were those days for you? They were tearful, really. Um, I was uh, assistant manager at Coventry, and Bobby Gold encouraged me. He said, go on, you, you, you might learn some more things that you've learned during Roy and all the staff at Liverpool, you can enhance your, your training situations and everything else as, as groups and everything else. So I went along and, and supported Graham Taylor and uh, it, was, it was bedlam because me and uh, a Southampton boy, what was his name, uh, the, the manager? Laurie McNenemy. So we were left with People, and I, I'm not saying I didn't like a drink. Roy knows I did. But we were left with Gaza. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Laurie McNenemy me, and me were left with Gaza. Hey. Samson, right? Yeah. Kenny Samson. You've got Gaza. And now Merson. <laughs> Tony Adams. <laughs> It was like having fucking alcoholics and <laughs> Fucking try telling them to go to bed now. No, just one more, Gaffer. He's gone to bed there, Gaffer, not me. And I was called a yes man. You try and do the true, you try and manage them. You know what I mean? It was so difficult. People, you know, it's all very well. Yeah, yes man. No, I was learning like I learned off all these people. Roy had alongside him, and, and why not? He learnt to go higher, and I wanted to go a little higher and carry on learning mm. about football. But to actually kind of manage five <laughs> alcoholics, it's not funny at all. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't. It's not funny at all. You can bring joy to a training session that you, you've learnt, but you can't manage their mannerisms and they were all devoted to having drinks in the evening, despite playing the next day. It wasn't easy. Hard work. Is, is there any really stand-up memories of Gaza that you could share? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free, no one's listening. <laughs> um, yeah, there was one. Yeah, he was good when he was um, uh, on coke. Not coke. 
Just put it right out there, Phil. Sorry, not, not Coke as in snuff, no. But cola, cola. Coca-Cola, you know what I mean? But he was lovely. I mean, I mean, we appreciated having a laugh as a group laugh. We, we certainly did. And I told my team today, I said, we wouldn't have been anything without a group laugh. Uh, and, and Gaza. Um, no, I can't particularly see, you know, kind of one or two things that he did. He was a magnificent player. If he'd have left the drink out, he would have been a world-class player, sadly. That shot um, against Scotland was awesome, wasn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think the talent he had in him and shifting his feet and are moving, sending defenders the wrong way, putting them in. And like he said, you know, that goal against, well, wow, we love to win against Scotland. I told you the one we didn't yeah, win, and I only watched it. And, and Gaza was wonderful, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. It was a waste of talent. Roy's, Roy's just said there, it is a waste of talent because with, with senior players that we had around us, that brought us to heal, to do the things in the right manner. Well, it was it was brilliant, and he lost his way. And the English George Best almost. Well, that away, one, that's what I'm saying. Mm. I saw George scored score five goals against Northampton. You know what I mean in the FA Cup when I was growing into football, and I didn't know where I was going, and and there he was scoring goals galore. So. Well done him, showing a great example on that day. Gaza was equally that talented, but it fell away because of it. You know, I'm sadly... Did you to have anyone else with him for a while? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got another hour. No, no, no. No, I, I, I can't say. We, we loved, we loved him. Roy, Roy mentioned it earlier that we loved a Christmas party. But Bob Paisley... Uh, and Roy was on the staff one year, and we found it difficult because we're playing 60 odd games a year. So we're saying, "Well, we can't organise. Oh, we we've got to we've got to have Tommy Smith's two clubs in Liverpool, right? So we booked them with friends, no outsiders in. They're friends, you know. We're going to have a, a night out, and we're going to be in Liverpool, and we can't arrange this one. But then we think, "Hang on a minute." We're playing Tuesday. Ah, bugger it. Let's just, let's just go for the Sunday, the only Sunday in December. So we go for this and order the, the nightclub, Tommy Smith's nightclub. So we go in in fancy dress. Imagine that, lads. I bet you imagine, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going in fancy dress, as always. Anyway, we play a game, I think in the... Anyway, we draw 1-1 one, one against Fulham or somebody on the Monday. And we go in the next day and Paisley knows we've had the Christmas party on the Sunday. So we've drawn on the Monday and the cop isn't very happy and it's not been a very good game. I think it was against Fulham, right? So we're in on Wednesday. So we're all waiting around the thing to come in. Anyway, he bangs the door. He said, all right then. <laughs> Who arranged the fucking Christmas party? <laughs> was it you? Or was it you? Or was it you? The educated one amongst us, and Roy will know, Stevie Highway, said, sorry, boss. He said, we couldn't, you know, we hadn't got another point in the calendar to even leave it till January, you know? We're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday. We had to take a go. He said, Paisley, do you want a fucking Christmas party? Have it in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> shut the door and went. He shut the door and went, didn't he? <laughs> Ladies and gents, I can't, what a way to finish. What's the tales here? The one only Phil Neal. Thank you, Phil. Right, we're just going to have a quick toilet and drinks break. And then we're going to do our presentation and we're going to do...